Kupunia secondary, welcome for your social studies lesson. And our main discussion today is about population distribution in Africa. Population distribution in Africa. And first and foremost, we have to define the word population. What is population, boys and girls? Population refers to the total number of people living in a given area. Rather, population refers to the total number of people living or occupy a given area or even a place. Having understood that one, let us now talk about population distribution. What is population distribution? Population distribution refers to the way in which people are spread out across a given area of land at a given time frame. Our people are spread out. The way people are spread out in a given place at a given time frame. Now, let us look at the factors that do influence population distribution in Africa. What is it all about? What is it that makes some areas to be more populated, or you can use the word densely populated, and others to be sparsely populated? What are those things which attract and those things which do not attract? So these are the factors we are looking about. And there are quite a number of them. And I beg you, I kindly ask you so that you can accompany me from the first one to the last one. Air, soils, soil. Areas with fertile soils and high rainfall automatically attract high population. Areas with the poor soil have always attracted very low population. And high areas of this nature are found on mountain areas, climatic areas, and what have you. Number two, factor number two, drainage. When we talk about drainage, we are talking about well-drained areas have high population than swampy areas. A well-drained area is that area when it rains, the water is able to sink, sinks, and it goes underground. But the opposite of that, there are some areas where it rains, the water remains up there. That becomes a swamp. And such a place, people fear. Uh, there is fear of floods in such places. There is fear of diseases in such a place. And these diseases are caused by this stagnant water. So, drainage is paramount when, uh, when you are choosing a place where you can live. And also, such areas which are not well drained, such areas are very difficult to construct this, the so-called infrastructure, the roads and water view. Factor number three, pests and diseases. Areas invested by harmful pests, such as flu, scissor flies, mosquitoes, automatically have got very low population because of these diseases. And the other factor is historical factors. What is it all about these historical factors? Historical factors, uh, for example, if you go to West Africa, I want to give you an example. In West Africa, for example, where slaves were being captured, you remember during those times, uh, we Africans were being captured as slaves. Such areas in West Africa where slaves were being captured, there is very low population because those who remained after this uh, barbaric, uh, barbaric behavior of slave trade, when those who are left, instead of continuing to live there, they moved to other areas because of that stigma. And the other factor is tribal clas clashes. Tribal clashes, this is another factor. Areas that have witnessed tribal clashes are very low population because those who are left, those who are left unaffected, they end up running away from such places, having fear that maybe these tribal clashes, they are, they're going to come back. And then the other one is economic factor. Economic factor. What is it all about economic factor? Places like towns, 
uh, have high population. Why do such places like towns, our cities, our urban areas have got high population? It's because there are two factors. People are going there to look for jobs, and at the same time, people are going there to look. Because such areas have got what we call uh, good opportunities for business. And there are other factors, of course. There are quite a number of them. For example, rainfall. People are attracted to those areas which are automatically have uh, high rainfall uh, in terms of millimeters. And then other people can be also attracted in where the climate is very conducive. You know, climate is always good throughout the year. People can also be attracted. So boys and girls, GSS, you can see there are quite a number of factors that do attribute to high density population and low density population in some areas. So as usual, I want you to do some bit of research because at this level you are supposed to be doing serious research. Do more research. And on top of what I've said, had more factors that do also contribute to this high or low density population. Thank you.